All right, so for today's class, uh, we're going to continue to look at what WordPress has, and we need to log in again. So go ahead and open up your web browser if you haven't opened it yet, and let's go to WordPress.com. So another good thing that I like about WordPress is once it's up on the, once it's installed up on the server or up on your account, you just access it from any computer. Whereas in the old days using Dreamweaver, if I install Dreamweaver on my laptop and I don't have Dreamweaver on my friend's computer when I go to her house, I can't work on my site easily. So WordPress is always available as long as you have an internet connection, of course. Go ahead and go back to WordPress.com and you've got a login button at the top right. So hopefully you remember your password from last time. Go ahead and log in. So of course, if you have any trouble at any point, raise your hand, I'll help you out. Uh, we also have a little bit of lab time at the end of the day if you want some more one-on-one -on -one help, so always feel free to ask. Uh, raise your hand and ask. I'll come help you out, or, or we've got time at the end of the day, often. Um, so one thing is I've been using WordPress for a while now, like maybe four or five, I don't know, six years, and it keeps evolving. And the WordPress.com site is the cutting edge of WordPress because it automatically updates since we're logged into their system. Later on when we talk about having our own website like victor.com, I'm going to buy victor.com at GoDaddy or whatever other company you, you like. We're going to install WordPress onto victor.com and then we'll be able to log in also. The thing there though is that it will not auto update to the latest technology and that's something we need to keep track of as, as, as web designers and web developers too. And we'll deal with that once we get to it. But one of the changes that's happened on WordPress.com is I kind of don't like it. I'm not that used to it yet, but um, there's a ways around it. When you log in, here it tells me, all right, you're in the reader screen and my sites. Reader is the screen where if you follow other people's websites or blogs, their latest posts will show up right there. So that's kind of useful to maybe find um, blogs about technology or design or whatever and you, you can follow them. But we'll get to that later because we want to deal with making our own site so switch over to my sites. And this is specifically what I'm talking about that's new. This interface right here is supposed to give you at a glance your latest hits, um, some settings on the left side like themes and menus and so forth and then publish a post right now and so forth. It's supposed to be like a quick one-stop place but I think it's a little too much like training wheels. I want to ride the bike for real and this I think for me is, is kind of limiting. So what I recommend when you log into WordPress.com on your site, my site's here, switch over to the WP admin. That's the one that's the that's the that's the pro um, dashboard. That's the one that gives you more control, I feel. Um, better than this because this is for me. It kind of holds me back from what I want to do. And again, because I've had lots of experience with WordPress, I find it limiting. But if you're brand new to WordPress, this screen right here might be perfect for you. So stick with it. But I'm mostly going to be talking about the WP Admin, also known as the dashboard. So click on that. And here we go. It takes us back to this to this back end right here. So we have to think of the concept here, these terms, front end, back end. The back end is basically what we're looking at here, the dashboard, the control panel, where you add stuff, where you delete stuff, where you control things behind the scenes, the back end. The front end is what everyone else sees, whoever visits your site, your customers, your readers to your blog, whatever, that's the front end. To switch back and forth between them, I'm in the back end, I'm in the dashboard, you want to hover over your site, or this is my sites, and click view site. So let's go to the front end for a moment. View site. This is the front end, this is my design, that's what everyone sees that visits my site. And if I want to go back to the back end, I just hover over again my site and select WP Admin.
So we want to get used to that switching from the front end to the back end, switching to the dashboard or view site, visit site, view site. All right, so every screen, because this is the powerful back end where we don't have the training wheels on anymore, we could get a little lost. So one of the things I want to make you aware of, because there's so much to look at or so much to control, sometimes things are not active by default. Like sometimes I want to make, for example, a link open in its own tab, but by default it doesn't, because the, the, the setting is, is hidden. So I want to make you aware of this that is available on just about every screen at the top right. We have screen options. Go ahead and click on screen options there at the top right. And this little bar pops up here that says, on this screen you can turn on and off these various things. Right now these are all on. At a glance, activity, your stuff, etc., what's hot. And if you don't want to see any of these modules, you just turn it off. Like, I don't care about what's hot, so I'll turn it off. Um, I can turn off, I don't know, activity if I want, whatever. This screen doesn't have that many things to turn on and off, but once we actually start to create more pages or posts and images, there's going to be a lot of things that are hidden from us because not everyone needs them. So the screen options here is a way to turn that on. Oh, look at that. It says here I got two whole views on the 23rd. Does anyone have any activity on their on their chart there? That's good. We're going to keep it going. Alright, so when we were here last time we wrote a post. Remember we had the My First Day of CIS 255. That was a post. Today we're going to create a page and then also a menu. So here in the dashboard, and this will make more sense the more we do it, but we've got posts and we've got pages. Anyone remember what I said about the difference last time between posts and pages? They both start with a P, but any differences? I think I heard someone say that uh, posts are the things that change on a regular basis like a blog post. Today I'm going to blog about something, next week I'll blog about something else. I blogged about something two weeks ago. I'm going to post something on a regular basis. It changes something new on my site. I have a question. Do you decide which page the post goes on or what? Nope. When you click, when you make a post, by default it goes right on the home page. And the newest post pushes the older post downward. So it's always on the home page? By default. But then, that, that Italian restaurant or whatever, it looks like the home page is fixed. Mm -hmm. So um, that one is not with a default layout. So we're going to talk about making it different so that we can control it a little bit more. But the default is that a new post always goes to the home page until we change it. Okay. So if posts go uh, there on the home page by default and they change on a regular basis, in contrast, a page is going to be something that does not change on a regular basis, like an about page, a contact us page, that sort of thing. And on my particular layout, it's going to depend on the menu and so forth, but we'll get to that. So here's what we'll do. Previously we made a post, today we'll make a page. Um, so hover over pages, and select add a new. We're going to add a new page. We get a screen that looks very similar to a post where we've got a title, we've got an editing area and other options which I'll look at in detail. Let's say today we're going to create a uh, contact us page. We want people to send us an email, you know, to compliment us or hire us or something. So up on the top 
we want to, in the title here area, we'll write contact us or contact me or whatever you want or simply contact. I'm going to write contact me. So write contact me and then click inside of the editor here. Do you notice that after you type a title, and you move down here, this address filled itself in. Yeah. So this is another cool thing. WordPress keeps track of all of this. It keeps track of your pages, your posts, your, your pictures, everything. And it made for us a URL, an address. If we were doing Dreamweaver or HTML, plain HTML, I would have to create a file called contactme.html. And then I would need to link it from the home page to the contact page. And then if I got the idea later on to change it to simply contact HTML, I'd have to fix a lot of links, perhaps. But WordPress can keep track of it all. So it automatically made an address. And notice it doesn't have the .html. Uh, but that's often what you see nowadays. It doesn't end in, a, in an HTML. It's still HTML code, but we just don't see it in the address. And let's say we actually did want just contact. We can just click Edit and change that to Contact. I'm not going to, but that's where you can change your your URLs, your addresses. Up at the top here, it'll let you change it. And that's also known as the slug. In other parts of the screen, you'll see, you know, edit the slug. And like, what is that? That's basically that term for editing the address of the particular page you're working on. In this in this contact area, let's uh, let's say here something about contacting us, and then a contact form. So we'll say if you'd like to contact me, feel free. Do you think the contact forms are good or stupid? They are totally good because how else are people going to get in touch with you, especially if you're trying to sell a product or get hired for something. Well, this will only be there for people that care about it. It's not going to pop out. It's not going to get in people's way to annoy them. If someone cares about contacting you, they'll go to the contact page. So I don't think that will be detrimental to people. So anything you want to write here is fine. I'm gonna press Enter. <clears throat> I got a question. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I just saw the permalink. I was wondering how to turn it on. Yeah, this this permalink or this slug should turn itself on after you type it and switch down to edit there. All right, so in the old days, if I wanted to create a contact form, I could design it in Dreamweaver really well. I can even have a little bit of validation, like if people don't fill in their email, it would warn them. But then we'd be stuck there because we can design the look of the contact form, but the functionality wouldn't be there because what has to happen is usually some sort of other code, like JavaScript or PHP, ASP, CGI, a bunch of other kinds of code would have to then process the form because you've got boxes, name, email, comment, let's say. And um, you would have to program it so that it captured all of that data and then actually emailed it to you. That was the old way. The new way, how do you think you can add a contact form to this page? You, you can make like, you can put your phone number or your email address. Sure. Uh, that's asking what people, what you want to ask people about what to write, right? Uh -huh. But here, look at right here, at the top we've got add contact form. So let's try that. Right. Let's click on add contact form right there. So here you get this, this basic form builder that's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to use. Um, on the left side you can say here, okay, um, what fields do you want people to fill out? And then who does it get sent to and so forth. The default here it says a person needs to type their name and it's required. 
Notice if you hover over any of these, you can move them just by dragging, or you can edit. So let's say instead of name, I wanted to I click edit and I want it to say your name. Label is what appears for people. Your name. Save this field. And now it'll show that it'll say your name. Email website comment those are the default ones maybe we don't care about the person's website I'm gonna remove that one notice there's a minus sign on the edge there to remove any field that you don't want notice that all of these are required a person has to fill out their name and their email and their comment if you want to delete something, you Yeah, that's a lot of the way people uh, learn just about anything. You can either RTFM or you can uh, trial and error. Anyone know what RTFM stands for? Read the funky manual. So there is a manual to WordPress, and we'll look at it later. But yeah, trial and error. Like, what does this do? And I click that. Oops, I made a mistake. No problem. I'll do something else. That's why we're creating stuff just to see how it works. I can do add new field and okay I've got a new field I'm gonna edit it and notice what do you want to capture what type of data do you want to capture you've got text checkbox drop down email name etc so this is pretty cool yes so is that big box like one is that what they're gonna send us message their, yeah, their actual message, like they want to ask me a question, that'll go inside of that comment box. And the field type is uh, text area. See right here we've got text area. That, like, that gives us the person a, a space like to write a paragraph or whatever. So we can make more complex forms a little later. You can play with that. But notice I've got here... I'm just going to have it for your name, your email, your comment. Yes. It's much easier than training. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely a lot, e a lot easier. Um, and even, e even better than that, being easier is that it will actually work without having to do any like pro extra programming. Yeah. Yes. Is uh, WordPress available in apps too? Is it what? Uh, is WordPress available in apps or just the email? You can download the WordPress app actually yeah. for Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, and you can you can edit your site right on your phone too. So it is available for apps definitely. All right, so um, let's say this is my form for the moment. I can always edit it later. But another thing that I need to do up here is, okay, we're building the form. We need to set email notifications. So at the top here on this top tab, you can uh, click email notifications. Email settings. Do I need to fill this out? Nope. However, if you'd like to modify where your feedback is sent or the subject line, you can. If you don't make any changes here, feedback will be sent to the author of the page or post and the subject be the name of the page post. So what this is saying is, um, over on our settings, we've got a spot there that is the administrator of the whole site. If we do not fill this in, it will automatically get sent to that address. And that might be all that we need. But this particular form, we might need it to be sent to someone else. So that's what we could uh, fill out here. So let's say we wanted to, if you've got some email address, you can put it in there. I'm just going to make this up. I guess I'll fill it in for real. Uh, I'll put my school's address here. So this is going to send an email to that address that I'm specifying there. And if I want to change the subject, I can. But the person, whatever they wrote over here under you know, these comments, will show up. So we can have different contact forms on different pages. Like on my website, I've got a contact form in, this, in the screen of contact, but then I've also got a contact form in the screen about request a quote. 
So I can set up a subject line from the contact form that says, you know, a new, a new contact item. And then the one from the, um, uh, from the request a quote will say a new quote request. So I can tell which form from which page I'm getting in my inbox. I'm not going to change that though, so I'm just going to click Save and go back to Form Builder. Mm -hmm. One time it was done where you get the inquiries on your as a text message. Is that that's fine with Tom if you would come? It is, and most likely that's a plugin. A plugin is something that adds more features to WordPress. Mm -hmm. So we can look that up. Probably something like uh, email to text message plugin. Okay. We'll look for that a little later. Yes. Can you add more than one email? Possibly. We can test it. And oftentimes what happens to add more than one email, you can separate them by commas. So I'm, I'm going to try that just to see what happens. It might complain, but I'm going to put it to my... It depends on the plugin. So I'm going to put in here two email addresses. Will it let me do that? Possibly. So it didn't complain. Anyway, so I'm going to add this to my post. And what it did was it wrote a little bit of code for me. Because again, everything that we do on a web page is basically code. So that's the that's that's the code there. And what I could do is I could always go back in and edit this code. Or I believe we can go back and just edit that. Yeah. All right. So you can either edit this code, and it's not that complicated. You could figure it out. Or you can go back to add the contact form, and that'll let you edit it in the nice interface. Yes? Does it allow um, like CSS editing, like to create It does, uh, but only in this screen here, specifically the text view. So if you switch over to text view, that will allow you to write any HTML or CSS. All right, so this is our page so far. I'm going to scroll down. We've got uh, page attributes. Uh, we'll deal with that later. That's for organization. Don't worry just yet. But remember I said WordPress has a lot of features, and a lot of them are hidden. So let's see what features are hidden for us here. We're still editing this contact form on, the, on your screen options. This screen options is context sensitive, which means it applies to different contexts, which means that depending on the screen you're looking at, you're going to see different screen options. So let's look at the screen options for this particular screen. Look at these things that are not turned on. Discussion, slug, author, number of columns, one and two, full, height editor, likes and shares. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on all three of these just to see what it looks like. Again, exploration. So I'm going to turn on discussion, slug, and author. And you should see that new fields appeared at the bottom. See that at the bottom? Discussion, slug, and author. So you can have multiple people editing your site, and they can be credited, um, and you can change it there. Slug is the same thing that we've got at the top with the permalink, the address. And then discussion, allow comments and trackbacks. And we'll get back to that. That's another cool thing that WordPress has, which is that you people are able to comment on your content very easily. Again, we'll, we'll deal with it a little later, but let's go ahead and publish this. Click Publish at the top right. And then uh, hover over My Sites and switch to the front end, so switch to View Site, so you can see what it looks like. I don't see mine. Do you see yours? 
So most likely this is what's going on. We created this page, but we don't have a way to get to it because we don't have a menu. Oh. So that's our problem. We don't have a menu that leads people to that page. The page exists. You know, you could do this. You could type on your address up here, the name of your site slash contact us, or me, or whatever I call it. Contact me? The page does exist. There it is, contact. But there's no way to get to it. We're going to create a menu in a moment. So try that, maybe. Put in your address and then just at the end slash contact dash me. If you don't see it, that's okay. We're going to make a menu in a moment. And just to further uh, completely test this out, uh, let me ask a favor of you guys. Uh, a few of you maybe, can you go to my contact form and fill it in? I just want to see if it'll send it to both my emails at once. So here's my address up here, a volunteer or two. Just go to my address up there and write whatever you want in the contact form and send it, and I'll see here if I get the email. The reason I'm testing this is because this built-in contact form with WordPress is good, but there are other ones that I know of that are gooder, and we'll talk about those later, but this is the built-in one. Yeah, it says here that you can add more than one notification email. That you can? Oh, in the little side area that I didn't read? Okay. Okay, good. separated by commas. Okay. So yeah, you can have multiple emails set up on your contact form. You just separate them with commas. All right, anyway, I'm going to go back to WP Admin because I want a menu item. I don't want people to guess what my address is. No one's going to do that. I want a menu so that someone can see at the top a contact form, an About Us page, or, or whatever. Any questions so far? Creating contact forms is pretty straightforward. We'll see that's very similar for menus as well. All right, so once you know where this menu creation tool is at, then it's easy, but the hardest part is finding it. On the left side, under Appearance, you have a variety of options to customize the appearance of your site. And here is where we create and manage menus. So go back to your dashboard and then hover over Appearance Menus. Appearance Menus. In mine, it says there is no menu yet. See, so we've got a tab, Edit Menus, some options here. Menu name, give your menu a name, and then click Create. So I'm going to call this simply Main Menu. Depending on the theme, I could have a top menu, I could have a side menu, I could have a bottom menu. I could have all three, or I could have combinations of them. Depends on the theme. So I'm calling this one main menu because I could have a footer menu or a sidebar menu. But at least I need the main menu, so go ahead and type it and then create menu. Menu structure, add items from the column on the left. So on the left, it'll tell me I can add pages, links, categories, and other things, depending on the theme. To my menu. Here I've got my most recent pages, or view all my pages, or if I've got a lot of pages, I can search for them. So switch over to view all here, because on my menu I want a home button, I want it to take me back home. By default, the, the name of your site is active and it'll take you home, but I do see a lot of people sometimes 
that they don't realize that and they're looking for a home button on the menu they never find it and they say your site is broken I can't get home and they never click on the on the logo so it's good to be redundant um, so we're gonna add the home and we're gonna add contact me about was already there but it was a it was a generic built-in thing we're not gonna use that one we're gonna make our own so select home and contact me and then add to menu So we look at it from top to bottom, but when it's up on the screen, it'll be left to right. So the first thing will be home, and then contact me. On the menu settings, also very important, theme location. Where will this menu appear on screen? Because even though we've created it and maybe saved it, we still haven't shown it on the website. So I'm going to put this on the primary menu. Yours might say something different because it depends on your theme. I'm going to save that. I'm going to look at the site, but here's a trick if you haven't done this yet. It's annoying for me to switch to the front end and the back end and lose my place. So I would recommend hover over my site and then right click view site, open it a new tab or window. I want to have the back end and the front end, the back end and the front end, end both accessible right away, so that I don't lose my place. So I'm going to right-click that uh, and open link in new tab. So my front end and my back end. My particular theme and my particular monitor has my menu on this little collapsed uh, menu item right there. A popular name for this thing that I hear sometimes, they call this the hamburger menu because it's two buns and then the meat in the middle. But anyway, the menu there, if you click on it, on mine, it pops open and it says, there's my home, there's my contact. <coughs> Yours, because you probably have a wider screen, it doesn't look exactly the same. But uh, here's how I can jump between the menus, the items now. Let's play a little bit more with this menu. Go back to the dashboard, back to your menu. Notice I can add pages, links, or categories. And categories relate to posts, which we haven't gotten to completely yet. Let's play with this. Open links right here. And here is where you can put a... Um, any arbitrary link to any website. Let's say we wanted people to check out our, our our Twitter page or Facebook page or whatever. So on the left side here under links, I'm going to type in my address. What text do I want to appear in the menu? So I can just say Twitter. So now I'm adding a menu item that goes over to an external website. Excuse me. Yeah. After, after links. Question. To push link and then my order was over under appearance. No. Mm -hmm. No. All right, so I've got a web address here and uh, the text that appears in the menu I'm going to add to menu. It adds it to the menu very easily. What's also very easy is to make drop-down menus, because watch this, if I if I click Twitter here and drag it, 
a little to the right, it becomes indented and it says sub item. So now that's a drop down menu. Depends on your theme, of course. But I'm going to save that and view the front end. And the point is, I hover over there, and now Twitter. Well, it's not as impressive on this theme, but on other themes, you'll see it actually drop down. So all you have to do is drag. All you have to do is drag an item under another item. It becomes indented, and those are drop down menus. You know, like your right click right here. If I right click, I have that drop down menu. So these are the items of my menu, and I can edit. I can still edit them if you click on the triangle at the end of your item. If you misspelled your address, you can change it there. If you want to change the text that appears, you can do that. The title attribute is the little pop-up text, the tooltip that appears when you hover over an item. So if I say right here, visit our Twitter, save it. Now when I hover over an item, visit our Twitter. And that's editing the item and giving it a title attribute. So does that work for everyone? Any anyone need some help? So that home link and that contact me link, those are what you would call internal links because they're within your site. They're internal to your site. This one on Twitter is not internal. What do you think it is? Yes. External. It goes off to someone else's website. The problem with that is that if someone visits my website, then they click on Twitter, they're going to go over to our Twitter page and they're going to they're going to read our Twitter. They're going to love it. They're going to subscribe, and then they're going to close Twitter, and then they lost my site because they went off to an external link. So what we so should there is, but look at this. It's not readily available. Here is the link, and I want to open it in its own tab or its own window. There's no option to do that. So here's an example where you definitely need to turn on your screen options to activate that option. So if you turn on screen options, I'm still in the edit menu, screen options, link target. That one's turned off. It's not giving me the option to open in its own window, target blank. When you turn on link target, look at that, open link in a new tab. That's what I want, and that's what I recommend. When you link from your site to some external site, I recommend you make it open in its own, in its, in its own window um, so that when people visit that other page and they close that page, they still have your page open. So whatever changes you make, don't forget to save. Either of the buttons on the right works. What's that? Either of the save buttons on the right is good enough. Oh yes. Sometimes you have a really big menu, so there's one at the top and the bottom. Oh, okay. But uh, either works. And now if I view the the front end, click on Twitter it opens in its own tab. And when a person is done with that tab, they close it, they're still back on your site.
by default, if later on we ask a page, uh, we we add a we create a page like shopping cart, that new page will not automatically add it, add itself to this menu. We would have to come back and manually select it and add it. If you want to avoid that, you can turn on the option right here, automatically add new top level pages to this menu. I don't recommend you turn it on though, because that'll just put that brand new page right on your menu without any organization. You're going to have to edit it anyway, the organization uh, of the menu items. So I never really use that one, but if, if you feel it'll be, it'll be useful to you, you can turn that on. And that's basically saying when you add a brand new page, it adds itself to the menu. Yeah. Right now, the only menu we're seeing on the front end is these bars. Are these bars and you click on it? Is that okay? Or is yeah. there a way to make the writing visible without clicking on the bars? That's how that one is because that's the theme uh, uh, style. When we look at other themes, it'll probably be the normal one that kind of goes across. So, um, so we created a page let's do one more thing then we'll take a break uh, we created a page but there was already a page that existed which I don't want anymore so here in the dashboard let's hover over pages and this time we'll go to all pages show me all the pages that currently exist And it shows here, there's already an About page. There's already a page that WordPress created for us. What does it look like? I can click on it or click, uh, you can click the name or click Edit. I'm going to click the name. And what that currently says is this. This is, a, this is an example of a page. Unlike posts, which are displayed on your blog's front page in the order they're published, pages are better suited for more timeless content that you want to be easily accessible, like your About or Contact. Click the Edit link or add another page. And go back. So there's already a page here that was made for us. And just for practice, you can uh, we're going to delete this page. And we can do it a couple of ways. If you've got 10 pages you're going to delete, or 10 posts, you can turn on the check mark next to them. And then at the top, we've got bulk actions to move to trash. Don't do this yet. But uh, if you've got 10 pages you want to get rid of, you select them all. You select move to trash and then you delete. Don't worry, we do have an undelete. We do have a recycle bin, a trash can, just like on Windows where you can pull something out of it. Um, that's one way to delete things. Or you can also, of course, just hover over an item and select trash, the big red item. So I'm going to trash that about screen. And notice at the top now it shows I've got one, all my pages, I've got one page. One page has been published and one page is in the trash. So we can always go back to trash here and restore it or delete permanently. So I don't think there's a limit to how long things can stay in your trash. Um, there might be. I have to look it up. But uh, if you delete something, it'll still be there tomorrow or next week, probably next month. Um, so you can always bring it back if you accidentally deleted it. That was a little bit about uh, adding a page and then, of course, putting it into the menu so that people can access it. We're going to take a short break at this point, and when we come back, we'll look at more of what we can do in WordPress. We'll do 10 minutes. It's 6.25, so we'll be back at 6.35.